So uh, without further ado, I'm going to let in our guests. It is Tiana and Sophie, and they are the co-founders and hosts of the podcast, She. Hi, everyone. Yeah, Sophie, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, hey, of everyone. course. Thanks for having us. Can you guys hear us okay? Perfect. Oh, there's a lot of you. Perfect. <laughs> We're going to have like a chat then. <laughs> that is the hope. So guys, just for introduction, we have Sophie and Tiana. They both run the wonderful podcast, She, which is an acronym for shifting her experience. And how long have you guys been running it now? Since 2018, 19? Yeah, so we've been running it for a year and a half. So actually 2020, we launched just before the pandemic hit. So that was kind of interesting. We, um, a lot of people ask us, did you start a podcast because of the pandemic? And we're like, no, we were actually planning it for ages. And then um, we ended up dropping the first few episodes probably the week before the pandemic, like, and everyone went into lockdown. So um, that was really inter interesting. But like Peyton said, I'm Tiana. And yeah, and so I'm Sophie. <laughs> and um, we are an engaged couple. We also run a business together, obviously, like Peyton said, she, um, and we have full-time jobs as well as uh, working for she. So yeah, thanks, Peyton. Oh, anytime. I've been obsessed with your podcast since it came out. So I'm happy I could actually drag you to make everybody else as obsessed as I am about it. So I don't know if you guys want to just like jump in, talk a little, I don't know if you want to open with she or what your jobs outside of it are. Then we can open up for questions. Yeah, I wanted to ask as well how much time we have, just so I, I don't go over time or anything. Uh, typically, our meetings go till around 9.30, 9.45, so yeah, until Got about it. Okay. Okay, great. I just didn't want to keep speaking. You're all like, it's late here. We want to leave. <laughs> um, perfect. Okay, yeah, so we can definitely start with, um, Peyton, you sent us over some questions that um, we feel are just like a good guideline, so we'd love to just talk about, I guess, who we are. Um, obviously, everyone here is probably interested in media, some form of it, whether it be writing, editing, design, I'm assuming, because it seems you all work for the magazine, correct? Well, yeah, so we have a, we have our online writing team and we have uh, three of our editors here tonight. We have our managing editor, Gianna, and our two section editors, Mackenzie and Jordan. We have um, our fabulous Gabrielle, who's our publishing director for the print magazine. And we have Isabel, who's running our podcast. We have all three of those mediums covered, not to mention we have business managers and social media. Right. And they're all here tonight. That's perfect. Well, anytime you guys want to interject, like this doesn't need to be like a lecture. Like you guys can ask questions. You can like chat with us. Um, yeah, because we're basically in the same industry. Never mind just um, our podcast, but just a bit of background on us. Um, so I work in video production. I work for Variety, Variety Magazine. Um, I'm a supervisor in the video department. So um, yeah, that's very much like obviously maybe a little bit more traditional media, but it's entertainment. Um, I'm not a writer, but that is Sophie. So we kind of like together make the perfect duo for like a media business in that sense. Um, but yeah. I'll let you speak to what you yeah, do. Yeah, we definitely bring like, we each bring something unique to the podcast. Like Tiana said, she's the media expert. I'm the writer. So yeah, I'm a senior editor at a writing agency. So basically I oversee like a, a team of writers and editors and we pump out like large amounts of um, content a day. So it's like super busy. So on top of that, yeah, we're doing the podcast and um, I also have like bylines for different uh, publications as well, like Women's Health and WebMD and Grunge. Um, so places like that. So yeah, that's basically what we do. We're the grind is never over. No, yeah. we're pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Even when you have a full-time job, you're still doing all the side stuff. So like Sophie said, whether it's bylines, our podcast, our business. So um, I think when you really love media, like you make it a priority to do everything you want. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think that's a big myth that people tell you that you can only do one thing and you should be a master in one area and, you know, jack of all trades, master of none sort of thing. I don't believe that to be true. I think um, you should explore every area that you absolutely love to do in media or whatever. So um, that's just a little bit about us. Um, I know Peyton, you also asked us about the story of us two and how we created She. Um, we'll try and keep it short, but um, basically. Yeah, um, yeah, we were just having yeah. conversations amongst ourselves and we just felt like when we first started dating, we were having these really um, like deep conversations for a couple that had you know just literally started dating and we were talking about very political things and uh 
just things that were like I said very deep so we just felt like we had like the same perspective on, on important issues in society and we would talk about them just amongst ourselves and then we decided before the pandemic like do we want to do something with this I feel like these are conversations that like more people need to have in society like I know that my um, like peers of mine like they they have these conversations too or they crave these conversations as well so we were very adamant that we wanted to make it public like our conversations make them public and yeah. invite other people who can speak on issues that we can speak on um, and bring them on as guests so that's basically the idea that we started with and then the pandemic hit and we were like okay great people are locked up in their houses what dying are, to listen to content like, so it, it actually like bode well for us yeah um, it was good so, timing yeah. because i feel like the podcast we talk about a lot of issues that are just starting to be talked about in society whether it be like queer issues women's issues um and i feel like there was a change with the pandemic where a lot of people wanted meaningful content like we saw you know i see on one side when i'm working for variety like the numbers for award shows like are going down because people don't care about like what celebrities are doing. Do you know what I mean? We don't care to see celebrities attend this massive event where like, you know, it's like a super spreader event. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like people, there was a shift of like, we actually don't care as much about these conversations mm -hmm. anymore. And we care about like meaningful conversations. So um, I feel like our generation is really like running with that which is great so it kind of was just good timing as well as like us just being like brave enough to speak on these issues and I feel like whether you're a writer journalist whatever you guys like want to do um mm -hmm. yeah like just be brave that. enough yeah. to do it like because people want to hear those kinds of conversations it so. does come with a certain amount of bravery because there's even like certain episodes that we've done where we're like oh you know what are people back home going to think yeah. of us for being this open but then it's like no there are people out there who are craving these conversations and before we did the podcast we were craving these conversations that's why we talked to each other about um, about diff different topics like this so I mean yeah it does come with a, a certain sense of bravery and it can be like very daunting to talk about topics that are very out there but they're needed in society so luckily like we have received like immensely positive feedback from women and men all over the world um who who yeah are like grateful that these conversations are, are being had like non-traditional topics that we yeah. talk about i think it was just like about time that yeah. you know people were speaking on these sort of issues um and for us like being a couple as well we just offer like a little bit of a different perspective than let's say if we were just two friends like we really enjoy speaking on like relationship topics and how to keep like, a healthy relationship mm -hmm. but also just like Sophie being from Ireland, myself, like we live in Los Angeles currently, but um, I'm from Toronto. So both of us are not actually American. So, which is interesting because most of our listenership is in the US, but it's just like an interesting perspective to bring as well when you're not, let's say American, but you're living here now. I've been living here for four years. So um, political issues come into our conversations is I guess what I'm trying to say. So um, yeah, it's just kind of like having the bravery to talk about them and, you know, Sometimes there will be people that love to hate on Instagram, but it's a part of the job. Yeah. I feel like that's how you know you're doing something right, you know? Social media is like a really interesting tool though, because you have moments where it's like a very toxic environment, but then again, it's a space where everybody can actually use their voice and, you know, everyone has an opinion and whether you like everyone's opinion or not, it, it social media means that it's not only like, the news and, and magazines and the newspapers that are covering um, everyone's voices. Like everyone has a voice in social media. So in that sense, like- It can be your best it, tool, it, like it as well. It can be your best yeah. tool. It's been like a fantastic tool for us because we've had so many people reach out to us via Instagram. And we've been able to communicate with people all over the world about topics that we're talking about. And we get like such an insight into what other like women around the world are going through that we would never understand like yeah. talking and about like, like intersectionality and stuff like that I mean we can't just assume that it's the same for everybody when you talk about feminism yeah no good point I was even going to say like it's just validating as well to hear that like a lot of people around the world feel the exact same as we do it's not and not just us but us as a whole here um you know the U.S. loves to be very political and we love to talk about those issues but it, it's interesting to see what's going on in other parts of the world too so when we have those messages from other people around the world it's just like validating to be like wow this is so needed regardless of where you are so um, that's been really interesting but in terms of 
Um, cause Peyton, I know you, um, had provided a question just about like, you know, our jobs outside of she, but balancing that work and how that comes into play. Um, you know, like I said, we do have full-time jobs, but you know, starting she was something we felt was absolutely needed. So it doesn't really feel like a job, even though, you know, it is to record the podcast and, you know, run that business and sort of like get those sponsorships for the podcast. But, um, I think when you really love what you're doing, um, it, I know it's so cheesy, but it doesn't feel like work, but that is true. Like, that's a true statement that when you love what you're doing, you're like, of mm. course, we're going to like, we have topics galore. We can't wait to get to. So we're like, we got to keep it going. Because it's important. Like we do feel like what we're doing is making a difference, even if it's just making a difference within ourselves. Like I might walk away from after recording the podcast and be like, you know, I didn't realize, like, I didn't think of that thing. And then you said it to Anna. So, I mean, we might be like educating other people, but we're also educating ourselves. So yeah, um, we're also constantly doing research, yeah, connecting with we are learning other people to facilitate it. that, whether it's a guest, like, I don't know if any of you guys have actually listened to our podcast yet, but um, we don't have a guest every single episode. We have a guest that can speak to a conversation that we can't. So whether that's trans folks, non-binary, BIPOC, like we will make sure to bring in somebody that can offer a different perspective um, and share their perspective. So that's been a really big thing for us as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's just something that we make yeah. a priority in our podcast for sure. But and yeah, even just going back to balancing work and the podcast and, you know, downtime and everything, like honestly, just, I don't even know. I mean, we're a couple. So, I mean, we have to be selfish and be a couple at times. So, I mean, we, you know, go in and we do, I guess, a lot of research and then we map out what we're going to say on the podcast and we keep it to a certain amount of time. And then we like to spend time with each other because yeah. I think if, you know, we have to have that boundary as a couple as well, because when you are in a relationship and running a business, you know, those lines can get blurred. So um, yeah, there's times where we definitely don't have a great balance, but then there's times where we absolutely prioritize it yeah. um, because we just want to spend time with each other. It's important. We're very yeah. big career people um, as I'm sure all of you are as well. So um, it's just important to also make time to like live your life too. Um, but Peyton, you also asked an interesting question about what it means to be queer women in media. Um, and that's something I, I would love to touch on. Um, yeah, please do. I feel, yeah, I feel like because we are a couple, it's like an obvious question to touch on as well. But part of it is, um, back to the conversation of bravery. I feel like sometimes you are going to be the only representation in the room and it's what you do with that representation that is going to matter because like bringing in more people to diversify the space and this is not just us speaking on she this is also in my full-time job at variety um for instance i'm the only woman on the video team so never mind queer woman so but that comes into play as well with like i guess like being a queer woman because i look to tell stories outside of just like straight heteronormative narratives. So I feel like sometimes you, like I said, you will be the only person in the room or in the meeting. Um, and while it's not your job to educate people all the time, you being there is going to make a difference. So like sometimes it's intimidating to enter a room where you're the only representation. I know I felt that when I joined the team at Variety, I felt like, oh, okay, I'm the only woman. No one is gay. <laughs> like. Um, but I've made it a priority to, to change that. And I actually see the benefit of them hiring me now of the, you know, they didn't even know I was gay, but um, now it's like, I come in and I get to be that voice for the LGBTQ plus community and say, mm, no, like, let's ask this question. Let's interview this person. Um, I don't think we should say that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So um, you being there is already yeah. en enough, you know, like, or you entering that like, space. You just being there as representation is enough because I would be the type of person that, I don't want to come in guns blazing, but I definitely would mention casually, oh, like my fiance Tiana and I, blah, blah, blah. Let people know like I am that representation there. Yeah. Just like to set it up almost. That's I feel like what I yeah. do. Um, but yeah, and yeah, I love that you said like you could be the like you could be honestly the first representation for some for people. a company I feel yeah, like or anybody. I'm the first representation for like a lot of people that I meet. Um you know, even like coming from, from Ireland, not, not everybody knows a gay person. <laughs> and even if like, you know, they, they see it on TV or whatever, not everybody knows somebody who's actually gay back home because it's, there's a lot of very rural aspects of Ireland and, and stuff like that. So I feel like you just being there alone and like those subtle cues of, 
well I am a queer woman like it's it's so yeah. powerful and it yeah. empowers other people as well because I'm very out in terms of life in terms of my career I don't try and hide it so um you know like I I feel like, and while that's like taking time to get there, there were, there's environments where maybe I, I don't feel safe enough to come out and that's a different issue. But um, if I feel safe, I have no problem talking about my experience and it's actually empowered other people to do so. So I think that's the most rewarding part when you are the first representation, like Sophie said, um, in any aspect, um, it, it's empowering. Cause I've seen people around me at work, maybe not my team. Cause like I said, I'm the only woman, but um, in other departments, if I've been in meetings and I mentioned Sophie, I'll get a message on the side, like, hey, like that was really empowering that you are out. Like I have been actually dating women or I've been thinking of dating women too. And it becomes like something, you know, something else. So I think it's important to see that representation for sure. Um, but yeah, I really liked that question, Peyton. That was a good one, but sorry, I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time talking, but I would love to know if you have any questions about literally anything, podcast, professional, um, and like literally anything at all. <laughs> definitely open it up for questions. Anyone in here have one? It's okay. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I feel you guys. I used to like attend lectures and do the same thing where I was like, I don't have it's, questions. It's late for you all, I know. <laughs> yeah, those meetings are always happening after class. I guess one thing I'll ask is like, how do you guys go through the process of reaching out to people to diversify? Because I know a lot of people in here are journalism majors or at least at the very least doing journalism work and reaching out for interviews, especially as a student can be, you know, you're this young female student. I know I've had you know, situations where I wasn't taken seriously because I am still in school and I am a woman and I was younger. So maybe just had to reach out to people. Yeah. Like you were just talking about podcasts. Like these people want guest speakers, but it's always hard. It can be hard to find them sometimes. We're working on the print mag right now. People had a ton of questions about properly reaching out for interviews. So if you maybe yeah. touch on that, that would be great. Well, yeah, that's interesting. You said that Peyton about like, sometimes, you know, you're not taken seriously and that continues, whether it be, I look young, but I'm a supervisor. So people think I'm not the one to talk to. So it kind of, it can follow you throughout. It's not just that you're, you know, you're in college and you might be experiencing this. So it's kind of a good skill to master now. I feel like most people will answer an email that's professional and honest and tailored to somebody specifically. Our best responses, we've reached out to people with like millions of followers and they've agreed to come on our podcast and we don't know them simply because We'll give a backstory of like why we think they would be a good fit for this, um, kind of showing we've done our research and we'll kind of like give a little snippet of what our podcast is and who we are so they feel comfortable. Um, but also like put yourself in the shoes of the person that you want to interview because we'll often get an email from somebody reaching out to us. And it's just honestly very professional, uh, unprofessional. And yeah. it's not like I'm like, oh, you know, you need to have like the perfect grammar and spelling and all this. No, mm -hmm. but like you do need to know your audience. You need to address that person. Like we would get emails that weren't even addressed to us, us really. or, yeah. or um, addressed solely to Tiana and not me, mm -hmm. even though like we're both doing the podcast or, you know, we'll get um, somebody who just does, has clearly never listened to any of our episodes because mm -hmm. it'll be very like focused on, like, I think someone reached out to us recently about like men's sports and we were like, we're not going to interview like somebody about men, like, yeah, like yeah. for this and we were like it just, that's not really our audience it just, yeah. it's not our audience like it's it's not there are plenty of cis men playing sports out there there isn't mm -hmm. enough like you know yeah. even women's teams you know so that that's and it's just like you need to know who you're targeting you need to know who you're reaching out to and, and it's little stuff like that it's like just be completely professional and know yeah. your audience new like yeah like know who it is you're writing to and don't be afraid to reach out to them because like Peyton you said you know because I'm in I'm in university still like you know people might be a little bit reluctant but you're also going to enter into the workforce so you know it's their mistake if they don't you know make that connection with you because you could go on to write more stories at different publications and it's kind of like their loss in that sense so as long as you're sending that you know thoughtful like professional email personable as well like mm -hmm. you know they have no reason not to answer you and if they don't 
it's usually nothing personal, but at the same time, it's kind of their loss because you are all journalists and you're going to go on to form those connections. And I know people even just speaking from my experience at Variety, like all of our writers form connections with the people they interview, like even these like directors, actors, musicians, they know them at this point because they've interviewed them so many times. So. Everything in that sense. So um, as long as you're being professional and, you know, holding yourself in a high regard and like speaking, speaking in a way that you feel confident about that email you just sent, um, that's honestly, I think the best service you could do to your, uh, for yourself, you know, um, just always be kind. I know it's so silly to say, but people remember mm -hmm. that like people hire the people they want to work with more than, oh, you have all these skills on your resume. It's like, you know, I hire a lot and sometimes it's who do we feel like is going to be kind, is going to be professional um, because they all might have the skills, but you know, are they going to represent I guess for the company well, or, you know, themselves. So um, really take the time to like personalize any emails you're sending out when you reach out to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. that was long winded. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I agree though. Yeah. Cause like when we see emails that people send to us, yeah. If they're personal, we 1000% yeah, take answer. them serious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Mackenzie, do you have one? Um, I'll mute. Yeah. I'll mute. Go ahead. Um, so I was just curious, I know you guys talk about such a wide variety of topics. Um, how do you just weed out the ones that you're truly passionate about and that you think should be highlighted this week? And how do you make sure that you're being like honest advocates in that sense, even if it's topics you might not relate to like as an individual? Yeah, yeah that's think, a good question. Yeah, great question. Um, we have so many episodes that we want to get through yeah, and we like, have, like we a have big to, Google we doc. Do, we, yeah. we have to prioritize them sometimes based on what's going on in the news at the time where like people mm -hmm. want to do like want to hear this or we might have like a list that we want to get through but something might happen to us in work that day and we're like let's do our podcast on this specific mm -hmm. thing that happened today um so that's kind of how we do it but like we still have so many episodes we yeah. do want to get through so I mean it kind of just like it's so haphazard but then other times it's calculated because we something's going on in the news so we're like okay let's cover this yeah but um what was your second part of your question too? well you, you would ask as well um like in terms of like how we decide like we're gonna do a topic sort of thing I guess so um like so said like we do have like a big running list of topics and how do we I think you asked how do we decide like I get almost like what's oh, relevant at the time you said, or yeah you asked like how are we able to like speak on some things or how yeah how do we yeah speak on some things if we can't speak on them basically yeah. Yeah, yeah it's honestly just like what we feel passionate about at the time that being said we do receive a lot of direct messages on Instagram that sometimes point us in a direction if something's going on in the news like you know when not all men was really populating on Twitter and that we had to do an episode just because that was something we wanted to speak on anyways. And then we started getting a lot of messages as well. And we're like, perfect. The timing is, is great on this. If it's something we can't speak to, like we've had a few trans guests on, um, we will let them speak. We'll literally come up with some questions and guidelines, but we're like, this is your time to, to talk. And we just kind of open the floor. So yeah. just being open to having that conversation. Um, if you don't understand the experience or if you can't relate, or if, in that case for us we're not trans so we would like to to hear them speak on that you know yeah we don't ever really come in like we want to um, critique somebody you know like we mm -hmm. had one of our uh, guests was um Cherie Deville and she works in the porn industry and she told us after the interview that she was not sure if we were going to come in and basically like get onto her and be like like the porn industry is oppressive yeah she, like she didn't know and we didn't I like we like asked unbiased. her yeah. we just asked her questions we wanted her to speak this was her experience what did she want to say um as a woman mm -hmm. in the industry um it wasn't our place to criticize her yeah. um you know and we had a fantastic chat with it her. was like she one said of our best some, episodes it, was, yeah. it really was like we had like a lot of fun on the episode and it was also very serious and she said some things that we just did not expect to hear or consider um so yeah we do have like you know we definitely just sit back and listen when it comes to having our guests yeah. on yeah I see a few hands raised does that mean like question yeah right <laughs> feel free to uh, call everyone else uh, why don't we go to Jordan why don't you go ahead 
Um, so I guess I was just wondering, like, I feel like a lot of topics I could write about, but I don't know if I necessarily feel comfortable, like, doing a podcast about it and, like, talking for that long. I feel like writing is something so much more guarded. So how do you feel, like, comfortable just, like, speaking it out loud, you know? That's a great can, question for Sophie, because I'm more the talker and she's the writer. So uh, I'll let you, you take probably that. You probably noticed already. I'm like, <laughs> I wait for Tiana to say it first and then I'll jump in. Um, yeah, I'm not, like, a speaker. I know I have like the imposter syndrome now because I do the podcast, but I do prefer to write. I just feel like I am more intelligent, I guess. I feel like I when like write. when yeah. I write, yeah. I just feel like it all comes out better when I write than when I speak. But um, honestly, like be prepared. Um, I have questions prepared when we do the podcast, if we're interviewing a guest or if I have notes for the podcast, I will read them. I mean, it's like we are not robots we're humans so I mean sometimes it takes us a minute to figure out what it is we're actually wanting to say so I would say just like make notes um I, I thrive when I'm writing I don't thrive when I speak but I do it anyway and like the more practice that, that I get I'm like okay yeah, like practice. I actually I can speak I know how to talk so um I would say just be prepared write notes and and just remember you're human and whoever you're interviewing is human as well I know like Tiana has interviewed a lot of high profile people in variety and she is like they're just people and you put it this way most moments. people are nervous like yeah, even like, celebrities that do it a hundred mm -hmm. times they still come in because the other thing is what may, might make you feel better at least for what makes me feel better is remembering that yes that they might be nervous and also sometimes as a journalist it's your job to make it a safe environment yes. and something that they feel comfortable speaking yes. in so yes. I remember that when I get nervous mm -hmm. if somebody's really high profile or if I don't know how the interview is going to go I just remind myself no you are the one asking the questions make them comfortable it's exactly what you would want so it kind of like snaps you out of it because you're like well, I have to like, you know, be that safe environment for someone. Yeah, so. And it might seem daunting to be like, oh, I have this responsibility now to make people feel safe. But um, like, I'm like a complete introvert at times. I don't want anyone else to feel like they're uncomfortable so that I will take that pressure off them. And remember, like I will remind myself before we do an interview for the podcast, okay, this person's probably more nervous than me. They don't know what we're going to ask them. Yeah. So I do like when we bring them on and we're really like kind we make them feel safe and like that is like probably one of the best things you could do yeah. that and to be prepared and have your questions yeah so yeah, yeah. great question. question I love that very yeah. selfie question, <laughs> yeah. <Selfie> question. <laughs> all right let's go to Brooke and then we can wrap things up with uh, Lori's question unless anyone has one last minute quick one to go over so Brooke go ahead yeah. hey hi I was doing you when you guys like find guests, do you normally prefer people that like have like a different perspective or like people who like specialize in the industry? Like, what do you really look for in like a guest when you try and find them? Yeah, I mean, it's not that we find or try and find people with like opposing opinions because we are a non traditional podcast and we don't want to have somebody on that's going to argue with us because that's not the podcast. We're not like an argumentative podcast, we're about open and honest discussion. So we really research people. We'll watch interviews on them. We'll listen if they've been on any other podcasts, any YouTube videos, because we want to be sure before we even ask that this person's going to come on and be open and honest. Sometimes people reach out to us. To be honest, a lot of people reach out to us saying, can we be on your podcast? And we'll always research the person. If they're not a fit, we'll just say like, basically, hey, look, like we're actually not taking guests right now. But um, if we feel like they are a fit because we've done our research, like we're very open to them coming on we'll send them the questions before and say yeah. um, you know it's going to be an open conversation the thing is yeah. that when we started the podcast and we decided we wanted to bring, wanted to bring on guests I remember us having a conversation and being like you know the media is full of opposing opinions like you have like a panel on a news show and like people are arguing and yes while that is important at times we didn't want to have that show because we didn't want to we didn't want to bring on someone who would argue against us and we didn't want to bring on someone that we would also argue against this was a time to bring on someone yeah. who is marginalized who doesn't often get a chance to speak in society or to be heard so let's bring them on to say what they feel like everyone needs to hear yeah so that's just what that's our style personally yeah. as a journalist obviously you are going to be looking for opposing perspectives in society and stuff but I just think like in the current climate and everything going on right now like we need to give voices to those who haven't been heard yeah. so that's literally like just our agenda 
Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it depends. Some some places want that opposing view. That's just not our, our podcast. We approach it with kindness and open conversation. So we re- expect the same as well. So we really research people in advance. Sometimes we even do a call with them before we have them on our podcast. So for you guys, if you're interviewing and you're not sure if you, let's say, want to do a full cover story on someone, you can do like a preliminary, preliminary call and kind of be like, feel mm-hmm. them out and see if this is the right fit, you know? So um, yeah, good question. All your questions are so good. You're all journalists. <laughs> yes, all right, Lori, we'll wrap things up with you. Hi, I'm Lori. I'm a contributing Hi. writer and I'm also a social media editor. Um, you mentioned how at times you don't feel comfortable um, coming out or exposing your sexual identity. And as a queer woman, I can relate to that. Um, I'm just now applying to internships. I'm a sophomore. Um, and I was wondering, how do you recognize a safe space? Like, it's okay if I come out here in relation to work environments, especially like in the media industry. And also, um, I love Viarity, and I was wondering if you have any internship positions available. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ask it. Go ahead. I love um, it. No, that's I, a good question. I, so I'll answer the internship one first because I feel like that's important. So in video, we don't do internships, but they do for editorial. I don't work on the writing team though, but I know we have interns. So um, I can have a little look at who the contact is and pass it, but um, I don't know anyone. That, I don't know the people that hires the interns. So um, I'm, I have a name in mind that might be uh, like possibly the p- woman who hires. So we'll, we'll chat. I can send Peyton the email. Um, I love it. Though. But I yes, no, you ask those connect, like ask for those connections. All of her um, is going to be working for Variety. It's all <laughs> thanks to Sophie and Tiana's podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody asked if we have social media internships. We don't. We actually have a really small social team. We have two people. We're trying to even get like video interns and that's like something we're, having a conversation about next year. So I'm um, just the tea, but, um, <laughs> but basically, yes. And you asked about um, queer women in terms of like safe space of coming out and, and all that. Cause yeah. I do want to touch on that too. Yeah. Um, First of all, though, I love that you said, um, when is it okay like to come out in this situation? Because we always say like, we come out all yeah, the time. You're never done. Like you don't come out once and people say, what's your coming out story? I don't know, like tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. Like yeah. you're constantly coming out when you just introduce your like partner or you yeah. say, oh, me and my girlfriend did this. Or, blah, blah. I think you know, sometimes as well though, like you don't always know if it's going to be a safe environment. Yeah. Like of course, when you're with your friends or you meet new people and you're like, okay, this seems safe. But in a work environment, it's different. Um, I always research companies before um, I apply to them and not not just, oh, are they going to be safe for LGBTQ folks, but what's their reputation? Like what's going on? Who am I going to work for? I always search who's interviewing me um, because you kind of want to like approach um, how you come out in a certain way, I guess. I waited until I kind of like got the job at Variety to say anything about that. Just, it didn't come up. Um, I talked about our podcast and like, I did say like, you know, we cover LGBTQ plus issues. So I, in my mind was like, take that as you will. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, sometimes like, it's just like dropping hints and seeing how they react. Yeah. But for me, I waited till I got hired and then I talked about Sophie and I, or, and yeah, it was kind of, that was how I like came out. Um, mm-hmm. And I made I think- sure to not like, I don't know. I was like very bold in the way, like I just talked I naturally about well, you. Though, and I. There comes a point, especially we're getting married soon. Like I can't like lie right. about that. Yeah all the time but not like lie is not the like best word to use because like I don't like I'm proud of Tiana and I'm proud of our relationship so I do want to talk about us but there are times where I'm like I'm just sensing and like Tiana's like an empath she can read a room and like I think like we are all like as humans naturally able to like read a room I think you can sense where like this uh, this yeah. person like I don't know if they're really gonna take to this well and to protect myself like I am not going to say anything because and that's why we educate on the podcast it's not my responsibility to educate every person on the planet every day like I have to protect myself at times so I think you'll know like okay like I I feel like I could trust this person and there's nothing wrong with being a queer woman but then there's absolutely nothing wrong with you saying "Uh, I'm not going to mention it here because I want to protect myself and and sometimes like you all like I've had like you know, I, I did like so much research before I went into Variety and before I went into the interview and I knew the editor in chief was also a queer woman. So I kind of like felt comfortable, even though she didn't interview me, nothing, but I knew I was like, if this company's being led, you know, the editor in chief is a queer woman. I feel at least a little bit comfortable um, in that 
I could, let's say, go to her. So sometimes it's, it once again, is having that representation, but sometimes you are going to be the representation and that's okay too. So um, I think it's, it's important to like sometimes be that representation for people, but it's not always safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but you'll know, I think when you get in there and you start to talk to people and you research them, you'll kind of like be able to see um, mm -hmm. their views or if they interview LGBTQ plus people at publications and all that sort of stuff. But usually in entertainment, people are hopefully pretty progressive. Yeah. Yeah. But great question. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, those are all our questions for tonight. So Viziana, thank you so much for speaking with us today. And we really appreciate your time. And I mean, hope to stay in touch with you. It was really, really great. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so of course. Much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Oh, all the chats. Thank messages. you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, that's great. Thank you guys so much. And honestly, just the fact that you're already yeah. like taking steps for your career is going to like push you forward so much more. Just keep being like bosses. Yeah, basically. I love this. It's fantastic. Keep up the great work. I'm so happy to see all of you like, you know, just pursuing what you want to do and just being like, so bold and, and everything i love it so yeah keep it up and yeah. Can, like yeah best of luck in your your career as journalists yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> and thank you peyton for bringing us on today yes anytime okay <laughs> that was welcome. all right thank you so much no worries have, have a great night, night guys bye bye all right for those who are still on the meeting have a great night get some sleep <laughs>